Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for standing by for Bowson's fourth quarter and fiscal year 2023 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After management's prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. As a reminder, today's conference call is being recorded. I will now turn the meeting over to your host for today's call, Ms. Wendy Sun, Senior Director of Corporate Development and Investor Relations for Bowson. Please proceed, Wendy. Thank you, Operator. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Our fourth quarter and fiscal year 2023 earnings release was distributed earlier before this call and is available on our IR website at ir.bowson.com as well as on Global Newswire Services. They have also posted a PowerPoint presentation that accompanies our comments to the same IR website where they are available for download. On the call today from Bowson, we have Mr. Vincent Chu, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Uh, Arthur Yu, Chief Financial Officer and the President of Bowson Ecommerce, and Ms. San Zui Zerbi, President of Bowson Brand Management. Ms. Chu will review the business strategy and company highlights, followed by Mr. Yu, who will discuss the business development of Bowson Ecommerce and about our financials and outlook, and then by Ms. Zerbi to share more about Bowson Brand Management. They will all be available to answer your questions during the Q&A session that follows. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that this conference call contains forward-looking statement within the meaning of the U.S. Security Act of 1933 as a mandate, the U.S. Security Exchange Act of 1934 as a mandate, and the U.S. Private Security Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements are based upon management current expectations and current market and operating conditions and relates to events that involve no or unknown risk, uncertainties, and other factors, all of which are difficult to predict, and many of which are beyond the company's control, which may cause the company's actual results to differ maturely from those in the forward-looking statement. Further information regarding these and other risks, uncertainties, or factors is included in the company's filings with the U.S. Uh, Security Exchange Commission and its announcement, notice, or other document published on the website of the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong Limited. All information provided in this call is as of the date hereof and is based on the assumptions that the company believes to be reasonable as of today and the company does not undertake any obligation to update any forward-looking statement except as required under applicable law. Finally, please note that, unless otherwise stated, all figures mentioned during this conference call are in RMB. In addition, we may elect to use adjusted in place of non-general accounting, accepted accounting principle or non-GAAP in order to reduce any confusion that may arise from our discussion about the financial related to the GAP brand. There are, there are, please turn to slide number two, and it is now my pleasure to introduce our chairman and chief executive officer, Mr. Vincent Chu. Vincent, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for your time. Uh, 2023 kicked off our journey of uh, transformation. Throughout 2023, Bowson Group demonstrated our resilience and adaptability to transformation. Uh, BEC reinforces omnichannel capability and improved service quality, consolidating our leadership within the digital commerce ecosystem. EBM contributed additional revenue stream and extends our value creation from supply chain to also supply chain fulfillment. We also further enhanced our cash generating capabilities with cost optimization, resulting from process re-engineering and more efficient working capital management. Overall, despite challenging market conditions, our annual operating cash flow and free cash flow both grew by double digit year over year and surged to record highs. 
This has significantly strengthened the financial health of the group. Total revenues of the group grew 5% year over year to 8.8 billion, underpinned by incremental contributions from Bosman Brand Management. BBM executed its strategy of premiumization for GAP China and achieved an impressive gross margin of uh, 54% for the year. This is in turn resulted in much lower operating losses, far surpassing our initial forecast. This breakthrough in our first year is the result of having established a solid foundation for growth and success in brand management. BBM is a key component of brand uh, group's, sec Bosun Group's second growth curve. Bosun International BZI represents a longer term opportunity for which we continue to lay the business foundation and the infrastructure. As BBM ramps up expansion following its acquisition of Hunter IP, BZI will play a vital role to expand Hunter into Southeast Asia starting with Singapore and Malaysia this year. This is a good example of the synergy and the collaboration between our business units. We believe that our expertise in technology applied to operations and business transformations is at the core of Bosun's identity. We are happy to share that Bosun has been acknowledged as a representative vendor in Garner's 2024 market guide for distributed order management system. We are proud to be the only Asian vendor selected alongside global retail service giants, such as Oracle, SAP, IBM, and Salesforce. This is a recognition of Bosun's outstanding technical capabilities in the industry. Looking forward, we remain cautious about the macro uncertainties, yet, we are confident that our ongoing transformation has strengthened our business fundamentals and our value proposition to brand owners. Our main focus this year is to continue to execute our plans diligently and patiently in a sustainable manner. With a healthy cash flow and a balance sheet, we will be ready to seize new opportunities and provide lasting value to our shareholders. This January, our board has also approved a new share repurchase program of 20 million US dollars over the next 12 months. We will exit this program from time to time, taking into account factors such as trading window and the marketing fluctuations. Let me now pass a call over to Arthur for a review of our financials and update on our e-commerce business, DEC, then to St. Julie for more uh, elaboration on BBM. Okay, thank you, Vincent, and hello, everyone. Let me do a quick review of the financials for the fourth quarter and full year of 2023, after which I will discuss our BEC business in more details. Please turn to slide number three. Belgian Group's total revenues for the fourth quarter of 2023 expanded nearly 9% to $2.8 billion compared to the same quarter last year, driven by incremental BBM revenue of $458 million. Due to a weaker economic environment, our e-commerce revenue declined to $2.4 billion. Further pursuing a high-quality business model, we scaled back on low-margin product sales and trimmed low-value added service revenues. Consequently, product sales revenue of e-commerce decreased 23% year over year, notably in the appliance, electronics, and fast-moving consumer goods categories. This was partially offset by increased sales from healthcare and beauty categories. Baojun brand management generated total revenue of 458 million, a sequential improvement of 53%. Our total product sales revenue grew by 36% to 1 billion, 
and the gross profit for product sales more than doubled to 315 million. Product sales gross margin for Belgian Group totaled 30%, significantly improved from 17% a year ago. The growth of our gross profit and gross margin was mainly attributable to incremental contribution from BBN. Group income from operations was 6.4 million during the quarter, of which e-commerce operating income was 50.1 million. BBM continued to show good momentum in reducing its operating loss to 43.7 million. GAP's premiumization strategy with discount control, new China for China product launch, and new store openings have all met our expectations. These initiatives will provide a foundation for better profitability in the coming quarters. Sandrine will cover the details later. On the group level, our net loss significantly narrowed to 2 million during the quarter from 256.5 million a year ago, as we incurred a significant one-time fair value loss during the same period of last year. Excluding the impact of ESOP, amortization, and other non-reoccurring business factors, our adjusted income from operations was 75.7 million during the quarter, of which e-commerce adjusted operating income was 118.2 million, and the BBM operating loss narrowed to 42.5 million. Our adjusted net income was 76.8 million during the quarter. Let us turn to a quick full year summary. We ended 2023 with group total revenue of 8.8 .8 billion, an increase of 5% year over year. Gross profit totaled 6.4 billion, an increase of 4% year over year. Our adjusted operating loss totaled 23.7 million. Please turn to slide number four. Turning to our cash and cash flow status. As of December the 31st, 2023, <coughs> our cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash, and short-term investments totaled 3.1 billion. We continue to improve working capital efficiency through back-end process re-engineering on infantry billing and cash collection management. Annual operating cash flow and the free cash flow were 454.5 million and 259.5 million, an increase of 19 and 46 percent, respectively, year over year. Now let's dive into our BEC business. 2023 is a year of transition for our BEC business. At the beginning of the year, we set a strategic objective of achieving customer-centric, high-quality, and sustainable business growth for BEC. This guiding principle steered the team's efforts and allocation of resources throughout the year. As a result, we have made progress in the following three areas as displayed on slide number five. Firstly, the customer satisfaction enhancement. We introduced a net promote score, NPS framework in collaboration with Nielsen in 2022. The objective of this initiative is to implement a robust client service quality management framework, defining precise standards for various services and measuring the outcomes. I'm glad to report that our NPS score has improved from 8.07 in 2022 to 8.23 in 2023. This improvement reflects our client's growing recognition of Baldwin's service and directly contributes 
to our outstanding contract renewal ratio. In 2023, over 97% of our key account clients chose to renew their contracts with Baldwin, and I'm pleased that we are well on track to further improve customer satisfaction in 2024. Secondly, we focus on driving business growth through strengthening our omni-channel capabilities and expanding core product categories. By participating in high-level discussions with brand partners and key market places, we helped our brand partners formulate effective omni-channel go-to-market strategies for sustainable e-commerce business growth in China. This enabled us to acquire of over 50 new brands in 2023, including Tiffany, Tumi, and Dyson, just name a few. From the product category standpoint, we consistently achieved growth in Baldwin's market share within our primary categories of luxury and the premium apparel on both Timo and JD platforms. And this has helped us establish a solid foundation from which we will extend our reach into new product categories such as wine and spirit, health and beauty, and luxury automotive in 2024. Given the dynamic nature of the e-commerce landscape, we are strategically investing in interest and content-based e-commerce. In early 2003, we launched our creative content to commerce division, which included a Shanghai-based live streaming center. This was followed by the announcement of our acquisition of Location, a leading Douyin partner in November 2023. Leveraging on our established partnerships, we secured several contracts on Douyin channel with industry leaders like Zara, Trox, Armani, and Coca-Cola, just name a few. <clears throat> Thirdly, we continued our efforts in efficiency improvement and cost control. During the year, we established a lean management committee to drive cost control and efficiency improvements. Our middle and back office functions have become leaner and more integrated through process re-engineering. We also scaled up regional service centers by transferring approximately 770 new positions into these facilities, generating an annual cost saving of 24 million. We integrated more AIGC initiatives through strategic partners with industry leaders such as Microsoft and OpenAI, enhancing daily operational efficiency of over 3,000 employees. Our efforts in working capital management also yield substantial results, setting new records in both operating cash flow and free cash flow, as mentioned in my financial update. Looking ahead, our primary focus for 2024 remains on executing our business strategy to create high quality and sustainable business growth. We aim to fortify our market leadership position in the luxury and apparel categories, while also expanding into high potential categories such as wine and spirit, health and beauty, and luxury automotive. We believe this will naturally expand our market share and TAM in brand e-commerce. We will continue to enhance our omni-channel capabilities. One of our key focus is Douyin, where we leverage locations expertise in daily live streaming in conjunction with Baldwin's creative content and e-commerce operating experiences. Following the completion of location acquisition in March 2024, we are now well positioned to seize more opportunities from our brand partner, 
and to create additional revenue streams for BEC. In addition to Douyin, we are also working closely with VIP.com and Little Red Book, aiming to build an extended ecosystem focused on value for money, content marketing, and traffic acquisition for our brand partners. We are also exploring business opportunity in other emerging channels such as Dewu and Kuaishou. We believe these new opportunities will extend our success across major e-commerce platforms, positioning us for sustainable growth. Lastly, we aim to further grow our high-quality product sales business in 2024. In the past year and a half, we have been optimizing our product sales business model by emphasizing higher quality. When we refer to high quality, we are aiming for both improved margin and enhanced merchandising and infantry control. As part of this effort, we have elected to terminate certain partnerships where the gross margin level and infantry risks did not meet our standards. In 2024, we have introduced a new business model where Baldwin serves as the exclusive distribution partner for a given brand in China. This model, uh, this model entails uh, um, managing all sales channels, both online and offline, utilizing our omni-channel digital technology. We are confident that by applying Baldwin's leading data and system technology, we can seamlessly integrate online and offline channels to deliver a superior performance compared to traditional distributors. Furthermore, with our product sales business, our self-incubated brand, Udaily Plus, continue to deliver high double-digit growth in beauty and healthcare category. We are convinced that this new initiative will drive the growth in both revenue and profit margin for our product sales business in 2024. Overall, I believe we have established a solid foundation and implemented the right initiative for our transition. We have confidence that we are now on track to strengthening BEC's top and bottom line while continuing to generate healthy cash flow in 2024. Now let's pass on to Sandrine. Thank you, Vincent and Arthur. And thank you all for joining us today. It is my great pleasure to speak with you. Please turn to slide number six. As you recall, in February 2023, recognizing a golden opportunity to reinvigorate an iconic brand, BBM acquired the operations of GAP Greater China with a clear vision to transform GAP into a lifestyle brand tailored to the modern Chinese consumer, BBM embarked on a journey fueled by innovation and strategic foresight. Our vision was to reinterpret American style for the modern Chinese consumer by localizing key elements of the core Gap brand DNA. We pursued a mission to make Gap products and messaging culturally relevant again in Greater China. The goal was not only to revitalize Gap products, but also to reignite consumer love and loyalty, moving away from a discount-driven model to one that resonates deeply with the aspirations of the modern Chinese consumer. We took over a business which had just closed 86 stores and was plagued by abnormally high levels of discounts all year round. And in just 11 months, BBM's multicultural talent and diverse teams, coupled with impeccable execution and technology-driven solutions, achieved remarkable results. The transformation of Gap China from a discount-driven brand to a consumer-centric powerhouse is evident in the following, as indicated, on slide number seven. First, 
team systems and processes. We focus on assembling the right team and implementing robust systems and processes to execute our turnaround strategy effectively. This included restructuring, hiring key personnel, and optimizing operational workflows, as well as putting in place a whole new set of systems to support our business. Then, premiumization of the brand. We embarked on a comprehensive strategy to elevate the brand by focusing on product design, product segmentation, supply chain enhancements, and improving store image. Our goal was to break free from the cycle of perpetual discounts and focus instead on appealing to consumers thanks to our products and brand image. We introduced a new locally designed China for China product, aiming to deliver the right product for the right people at the right time. We launched the new products with an integrated go-to-market approach combining celebrity endorsements, new store openings, and social media campaigns. We imposed discount control as the key factor driving the increase in gross margin percentage, which has reached about 1,100 basis points, excluding royalty. We also open our new store concept, which is more boutique, as opposed to the previous big box type of concept. We're enhancing the brand DNA, transforming our stores into more than just commercial channels, and creating immersive brand experiences. Our stores are now smaller in size, but higher in square meter efficiency, optimizing space for a better customer experience. We've implemented scenario-based and serialized co-location of merchandise, creating relevant festive atmospheres that resonate with customers. In-store pop-ups and campaigns are generating social buzz and further enriching the store experience for consumers. Leveraging WeChat and Omni CRM, we're gaining insights into each customer and offering seamless engagement beyond the physical store. We successfully opened 10 new stores in 2023, including a flagship destination store in Guangzhou, as well as new stores in Chengdu, Shenzhen, and Beijing. We've enhanced the retail experience, achieving a 50% increase in square meter efficiency for newly opened stores versus the existing portfolio on a full year basis. Additionally, our existing stores have seen a notable 19% rise in same-store comparable sales. Other new stores have been warmly welcomed not only by our customers, but have also gained brand recognition within the retail industry. We are proud to report that we achieved our objectives in these areas within the time frame. In fact, in some aspects, such as gross margin, we not only met but exceeded our 2023 targets. This demonstrates the effectiveness of our strategies and the dedication of our team in turning around the business. In 2024, based on our strengthened foundation, we will continue to build on the momentum to solidify the brand fundamentals and revitalize growth for the Gap brand in China. While we pursue 2024 top-line growth, safeguarding our gross profit remains paramount. We will achieve this through stringent discount controls and increased special production tailored for our online business. We expect that these efforts, combined with continued control of expenses, will lead us to achieve Gap China turnaround in 2025 as planned. Lastly, we have completed the acquisition of Hunter's Intellectual Property and established a joint venture with Authentic Brands Group. We now co-own Hunter's IP in Greater China and Southeast Asia, and BBM has become the licensee for operations in Greater China and part of Southeast Asia. 
Currently, we are in the preparation phase, focusing on tasks like store transfers and product planning. The coming second quarter will be the official kickoff of our endeavors with Hunter. We have ambitious plans for Hunter's growth, including expanding into new categories and diversifying our distribution channels to unlock the brand's full potential in China, as well as in Singapore and Malaysia in Southeast Asia. Leveraging our bolstering international BZI business units, we aim to further support and accelerate Hunter's business expansion in this region. This concludes our prepared remarks. Thank you, operator. We are now ready to begin the Q&A session. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the key. If at any time your question has been addressed and you would like to withdraw your question, please press star then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. The first question today comes from Alicia Yap with Citigroup. Please go ahead. Hi, um, thank you. Um, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is, um, what is the latest uh, consumption shopping sentiment that you have observed over the past two months in 2024? Um, what is management expectation of the macro overall and the consumption outlook for this year? Uh, while we think it's still early, so I'm not sure, um, have you started to plan for um, this year's 618 promotional festival. Uh, what do you expect uh, that could be different this year versus previous years for the June 18th um, promotion uh, period? And then second question is for the BDM business. Um, just wondering, um, have you noticed any meaningful difference uh, in terms of the user spending habit, um, for example, um, the average purchasing uh, value uh, at the offline store versus, um, you know, what you have been uh, operating, which is the online store, um, the, the behavior for the user um, that you can make some comparison. Uh, and then if, if there is, um, you know, opportunity for you to acquire or add a few more brands to your BDM business, uh, could you share with us your decision-making criteria and what kind of brands that you're most eager to add to your portfolio of management? Thank you. Okay, I will take the first one, Alicia, uh, for your question, and then I will pass on to Sandrine uh, and Vincent to talk about the second one. Yeah. Regarding the uh, consumption uh, sentiment, um, I have to say the sentiment is still uh, not recovered very quickly and uh, the consumer confidence, as we can see the figures, is still very low. But within that, there are some highlight points uh, where we can see some category has performed uh, actually better. For example, outdoor, uh, healthy foods and nutrition. So those are uh, the spotlights which we have seen some good, um, a good recovery on the consumption. Regarding to 618, uh, we haven't formally kicked off the plan for 618. That will start in May. However, we have already focused on uh, uh, to improve the daily sales. For example, doing a good operation and doing uh, a good customer service and try to engage with the customer, which is trying to build a customer base and getting ready for the big promotion in 618. And the difference I have seen for this year is the daily sale becoming more and more important, which means the, uh, the ongoing operation uh, from um, a capability perspective is becoming more and more important. So that's for my first question. Sanjay? Yeah, thank you, Vincent. So thank you, Alicia, for your question. So first, uh, the first part of your question is about uh, online versus offline uh, consumer behavior. I mean, uh, it's pretty clear that the premiumization progress that uh, I, I talked about, 
uh, is going faster offline than online. Uh, nevertheless, online we have also uh, been able to achieve a much better gross margin than previously. So it's, it's a question of, uh, of cycle and time. It takes longer. Then regarding your second question, we are actually looking at multiple opportunities, uh, but we are being extremely selective with in mind, I would say, th th these criteria, the four criteria I'm going to say, which are really the key criteria. Um, the first one is obviously the segment uh, and the category in which these brands belong to. Uh, we're looking for uh, brands that are um, operating in a very dynamic segments, and there are still uh, pockets of, of growth which are very interesting in China. The second key criteria is that these brands need to have some true potential uh, to develop in the greater China and potentially Southeast Asian markets. The third one is the synergies with our current portfolio, particularly with regards to supply chain, but not only. It's really um, a synergetic uh, brand we are looking at. And the fourth one is brands that will enable us through the right transaction to act on what has been really key so far to the uh, successful uh, progression uh, of uh, GAP, which is China for China, meaning that we need to be able to work on the product. And the second one, we need to be able to really make a digital difference with our technology leadership. These are really the four key criteria for us. Thank you. The next question comes from Thomas Chong with Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Thanks, management, for taking my question. Uh, my question, Mr. First, uh, can you talk about uh, the growth outlook for long Timor channels and the contribution uh, to our GMV? And then, uh, secondly, uh, as we highlight in the prepared remarks, uh, we are looking into operating efficiencies, improving profitability. So I uh, just want to get some more color about the trend in our operating expenses and our margin outlook. And then uh, finally, uh, there is more about um, our use of cash and our thoughts about uh, M&A. Thank you. Okay, Thomas, four questions. Yeah, let me, <laughs> let me take them one by one. Uh, the first one, um, outlook for non-TMO uh, channel. Um, as I mentioned in my early part, all mini channel is a trend and it's a strategy we will follow in 2024. And uh, we have put a lot of emphasis on Douyin and Tencent channel. Uh, we also are looking into the new channels like the VIP.com and the rest. We believe, uh, given the complexity and the evolving of the China e-commerce landscape, our mini channel is becoming more and more important. Uh, from a number perspective, our non-TMO channel has increased. But however, we are not looking at the number by itself. We are looking at capabilities, because the capability will allow us to do our mini channel. It doesn't matter where the traffic goes. We will be able to adjust along with the brand very quickly and very easily. So that's the first one. Your second question is about operating efficiency. So um, from, from the BEC's perspective, we established uh, a lean management committee looking at how to capture the cost saving um, uh, um, and efficiency opportunity in a very structured way. And in that program, we have already delivered very significant savings. So for example, as I mentioned, our regional service center program has delivered, uh, uh, um, has transferred 770 uh, positions from Shanghai to lower cost location, which generates more than 20 millions of savings. That's just one of those, uh, one of those examples. We have a set of those examples in terms of how to uh, drive the cost of savings. In terms of the BBM, we currently focus on two things. One is uh, from the third party procurement. We actually put a lot of emphasis to deliver over 30% of savings in terms of the third party procurement. 
And secondly, it's the overhead control. Uh, um, uh, when we take over the business, we have streamlined the overhead to save the money. Uh, I will pass on to Sandrine to talk about the growth margin improvement in GAP as well, which also driving the margin improvement. Sandrine. Of course. Well, I mean, for the gross margin, obviously the uh, procurement is an important part of it, uh, as uh, Arthur mentioned. But key all year round has been our absolute control over discounts, uh, so that we really uh, bring the we, we convince consumers to come and see us and buy our products, be it online or offline, not just because they're discounted, but because they are good products with a good brand. So in order to get these results, we had to exercise extreme discipline on discounts, that's number one, but also uh, to bring the right products at the right time in stores which are more attractive and with the right marketing uh, communication and marketing messaging. Uh, this is in order to attract consumers. Yeah, thank you, Sandra. And on the use of cash and also M&A strategy. So for the cash, as you've seen, because of our high OC cash flow, we keep a relatively high net position. So we will use our cash to deliver the shareholder value in both short term and long term. In the short term, as Vincent has announced, the board has approved a repurchase program on our share, and we will start that program uh, once we have opportunity. And in the longer term, when we're looking into using the cash to do M&A, we are very selective under the current market situation. Uh, we're looking at a target for both strategic fit and also high OC financial status. So in this way, we will be able to use our cash very effectively to drive the longer term value for our shareholder. So that's my answer, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press star, then one, to be joined into the question queue. The next question comes from Juan Zhao with CICC. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, and thanks for taking my question. Um, my first question is that you mentioned that Boston will launch the footwear brand Hunter in the Southeast Asia. Uh, could you please share some details about the strategies of Boston's international business in the 2024? And my second question is that could you please share your investment plan in AIGC and how AIGC will be used in companies' business? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Wenjo. Um, well, this is Vincent. Uh, the first question is about uh, our international uh, business. We call this BZI. Uh, I think after this uh, almost two years efforts, right now we have uh, established uh, a full uh, team uh, who can deliver e-commerce services to the, uh, our target brand, number one, that is. And number two, we also established a brand uh, business team as well. So that, that means that we can not only uh, provide the traditional e-commerce services in this region, just like we are doing in China, but also we can help the brand to have the online, offline business, omnichannel business in Southeast Asia as well. Yeah. So this gives us uh, a lot of potential to help brands to uh, expand their business into this region. Uh, so right now we have uh, established all, uh, uh, several offices in different countries uh, to, uh, to, to run a business uh, for e-commerce services and also uh, the brand business. Uh, so Honda is a good example for the brand business. Uh, we are going to uh, open uh, online stores and offline stores uh, this year, uh, mid, 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 middle of this year. And uh, we also conducting uh, marketing uh, you know, for brand marketing in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, so Singapore and Malaysia will be the first two places we're going to run Hunter business in Southeast Asia. And uh, also, uh, you know, our experiences, data, technologies will be, will be all utilized uh, into this omni-channel Hunter business. Uh, so that is uh, uh, for your first question. The second one is about AIGC. Uh, I just want to uh, this in two levels. Uh, first level is that in a whole group, 
uh, no matter it's um, BEC or brand business BBM, there's two um, uh, business units. We all use AIGC in general. It means that when, they, when we want to generate, no matter it's text or photos or uh, videos, uh, you know, we uh, utilize the uh, results from Open and Microsoft. Uh, these are uh, these kind of big players. Uh, you know, so you can see AIGC uh, capabilities in different, you know, almost all uh, functions of our business uh, units. So that is, uh, in general, we are adapting this uh, uh, capability from the outside uh, players. Uh, secondly, uh, based on that, based on the general capability, uh, we also have some uh, specific uh, directions. We want to pour more resources to uh, create some uh, leading edge for the uh, uh, you know the the, the, the the business to help them uh, against their own uh, competitors. Uh, so right now it's still early stage. Uh, we're doing some of the, uh, some of the um, some of them are uh, proof concepts. Some of the of them are um, minimum viable products. So, but we we hope they can make uh, progress this year because. Um, uh, compared to your previous years, right now we uh, we work much more closely with brands, especially uh, Gap and uh, Hunter. So I think we can have um, much better results than before in this direction. Yeah, that is uh, for your second question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Colin Chan with CIP IT Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my question. I'm Colin Shine from Citic Securities. And I have two questions about BBM. Uh, the first is that uh, we saw significant narrow down of gaps loss in the past quarters, and uh, the offline same store sales achieved double digit growth in the fourth quarter. And during this process, what progress is better your expectation? And what, measure, what measures can be further adopted to improve the margin of gap in the, in the future? Uh, and the second question is that in your experience of running gap, what's a key know-how of fully running an international brand in China's online and especially offline market directly? And how would that experience be leveraged in your further operations in other brands such as Hunter? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Colin, for this question. So, um, on your first question, um, I think uh, what uh, was a good surprise clearly was the uh, faster improvement of the gross margin than we expected. We had planned for improvement of gross margin, it was actually at the heart of our plans, but uh, honestly, uh, it has been even better and faster than what we had expected. Um, of course, there is still room to, uh, to further improve uh, overall the fundamentals of the business, um, and, but uh, still, I think it's important to notice that it's, uh, it's actually the, the, the most uh, pleasant surprise, I would say. Um, now, what room we have to further uh, improve, it's going to be through, uh, obviously, further working on refining product and product segmentation. That's pretty uh, clear, but also by using data. Uh, we, ex we explained that in, uh, in the first phase of our work, which was 23, we already did quite some work to uh, change all the legacy systems of uh, GAP China uh, and to bring a new uh, platform of systems uh, thanks to uh, Baozun technology. Now, really, in this second phase, we want to go much further in terms of data enabling us to be even uh, thinner in our understanding of consumers and also enabling us to have almost instant reaction in terms of messaging and product uh, once we have this very um, refined uh, information. So that's for the uh, gross margin, but gross margin also overall requires continued discipline. It's a lot about the discipline on discounts. And overall, also, uh, regarding our strategy going forward, now I think uh, uh, clearly we want to uh, go back to a growth strategy with uh, more store opening, uh, continued improvement of our store productivity, and um, a multi-channel approach to our online business. 
So that's for the first uh, part of your question. On the second part of the, of the question, I think um, in terms of synergies, clearly it's going to be about the product machine, number one, and number two, um, the systems. But in terms of overall learning and uh, of the, from the experience, it's also about how important the teams and the people are in this business. It's all about people. And I think this is uh, something we really worked hard to put the right team together, and we're quite happy with our team. But it's also about constantly trying to enchant uh, the consumer's experience with interesting stores, interesting stories, interesting products. And um, this, in a, in a time of uh, weaker consumption, this necessary enchantment of consumers is even more important. That's for my answer to your questions, Colin. Thank you, Sandrine. Uh, very clear for my question about BBM, and I have a follow-up question about uh, the BC. And since the beginning of the year, almost all e-commerce platforms are talking about and emphasizing about the price power. And from the perspective of Baozun and from the perspective of brands, uh, how how do you view the competition and situation of China's domestic e-commerce? Platforms and how uh, did you uh, did you see any uh, the consumption characteristics changes in consumers' behavior and how would Baozun react to this trend? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Colin. And it's a good question. Uh, uh, yeah, we have also observed the increase uh, emphasized on the price uh, point and also the service level from each of the platform. Uh, we believe it's actually a good trend because it will make sure uh, the platform actually delivering a better service to the brand and also to the consumer. Uh, from a consumer perspective, um, quality has always been a theme. So a good quality brand will always have uh, the market. Value for money doesn't mean good quality brands will not be favored by a lot of consumers. So instead, uh, the latest technology and the transparency of all the e-commerce platform provides a good opportunity for consumers to compare and choose where they buy. And that drives two things. Number one is how to design, uh, 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 how to define a omni channel strategy for uh, those brands on um, the current e-commerce dynamic is very important. So that's where uh, Baldwin can use our experience and our technology to help. Secondly, is the experience. How to improve the online purchasing experience uh, for the brand to help them to increase the conversion. This is also what we can do using the data and technology to enhance. So uh, with that trend, we believe uh, we're both in positions. We are very strong in technology. We are very strong in data. We have a huge experience across different categories. Will allow us to grow the market share in the current dynamic of e-commerce. Thank you, Colin. The next question comes from Cheryl Way with HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi. Good evening, management. Thank you for taking my questions. Uh, I'm asking uh, on behalf of Charlene. So I have a question regarding the product sales segment. We understand that product sales has been under adjustment and, inter and some uh, challenges for two years. How should we think about this trend entering into 2024? So is there any chance we can see this segment, the revenue growth or decline can stabilize this year? And what are the key drivers and the challenges here? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, for the product sales, first of all, uh, it has already uh, started to see the stabilization in quarter one, and we will see uh, the product sales revenue 
uh, as our plan starts to increase from quarter uh, two and quarter three onward. For the full year, we expect to see an increased product sales revenue from BEC. Uh, from the uh, uh, from the business uh, management perspective, we put a lot of emphasis on better control of uh, the risk from the product sales. Uh, what we emphasize on is two things. Number one is infantry, and number two is the commercial terms. We will make sure we rationalize the infantry level to reduce the risk and enhance our cash flow. At the same time, in the negotiation, we will put a strict requirement on our commercial terms to protect our growth margin. So that's the first one. Secondly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we introduced a new business model on product sales this year, um, uh, um, which is focused on uh, acquiring the exclusive distribution ownership for a brand. So in this model, Baldwin will have a full control of all sales channels, both online and offline. Uh, and using our data and system technology, we will be able to enhance the efficiency throughout our system. And we believe we will do better than traditional distributors uh, by using our data and technology. And thirdly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our uh, own incubated brand, Udaily Plus, has seen a double-digit growth. And in 2024, we expect to see that part uh, will further increase, and that will also help to drive the product sales revenue. With those initiatives, we believe we can drive both the online and uh, we can drive both the top line and bottom line of our product sales business. Thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Wendy Sun for any closing remarks. Thank you, operator. On behalf of the Bowser management team, we would like to thank you for all your participation in today's call. If you have any further questions, just feel free to reach out to us. This concludes the call. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. The conference has now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.